Okay, um, in this video we're going to be talking about um, the audiophile law of di diminishing returns and um, a video talking about um, an IEM that they compare favorably to a Sennheiser HE1. A Sennheiser HE1 is a extremely expensive headphone and it reminds me of when I was watching a microphone review video in the microphone community. They compared a cheap like hundred something dollar Chinese microphone to a multi thousand dollar Neumann U87 AI legendary uh, microphone. And just by comparing the microphone favorably to that extremely expensive, well renowned uh, microphone, people went out in droves and bought this cheap Chinese microphone that sounds like crap, to be honest. Most people are tone deaf. They can't tell the difference between audio equipment. So they base their audio equipment purchases based on word of mouth, what they see other people using. Even people that spend years listening to audio have no idea what they're talking about. A lot of them can't read frequency responses and they don't know anything. Um, and it's really easy. Like I, I've been told so many times to, you know, focus on, you know, entry level beginner audio people, you know, books like, you know, how to code for dummies or how to learn Japanese for dummies. You know, the, the first course it has tons of reviews. By the time you get to, you know, some of the more advanced um, books, you know, like course three or something, uh, nobody's reviewing it. Nobody's buying it because they all gave up at the beginning stage and moved on to do something else with their time. So you should a lot of times focus on those beginners those people that don't want to learn a lot of this stuff that can't learn a lot of this stuff. So, for example, let's listen to this. It, it's, it, it sounds very much like um, when I was a kid and, you know, you would hear people, you know, compare products based on, you know, very stupid reasons. Well, no, what's stupid is you spending $2,000, $3,000, $4,000 on something that's only going to give you 2%, 3%, or 5% more sound in one area when you could have EQ'd it. See, the, the, this whole thing where you can get better sound quality the more money you spend and, you know, EQ, this is all a bunch of stupid crap. Um, this guy didn't even show frequency responses throughout this whole 33-minute long video. I know that because I was stupid in doing this. I was stupid in listening to people tell me that this was you know that I needed to buy a yet another IEM because this this Cato here is just a basic IEM. It's the lower class because of the cost. You need to you need a mid tier or a high tier or a kilobuck item to really get into real, what true audiophile listening is truly about. That's a lie. That's a flat out lie from the pit of Satan. I know this because I've done it. I have experienced it. And so, yeah, there's a lot of really expensive, exotic, boutique IEMs that just sound like crap. And the, the people that are buying it are people that don't know anything. A fool and their money are easily parted. So if we look at the um, audio that he's looking at, the Audio U12T versus the Moondrop Kato, we can see this is um, the two IEMs that he has there. One's very expensive, the other one's really cheap. And we can see the Kato has about the same bass, the same mids. Once we get into the upper mids, the Kato is actually better. It follows the end game target a lot better. Um, this huge scoop widens soundstage at 3K, but it's just obscenely intense scoopage um, and overdone. And then when you get into the treble, they have about the same treble, literally almost exactly the same treble, but the Kato is actually smoother in the upper mids, low treble. They both have this huge hole in the treble, which is bad. And then they both go up in the same region. So they both have the same tonality in the highs. But the Kato just does it a little bit better. It doesn't have this extreme 3K dip. They have the same mids and bass. You know, the upper mids, the, the Kato is actually better. And they both have the same treble hole around 10K. You know, and, you know, if, if he knew about frequency responses and, you know, he wants to get that last bit of, you know, 2%, 3% audio quality. If he knew about the um, SimGod EM6L here, so I just introduced the SimGod EM6L. 
Um, admittedly, the, CM, the EM6L does have a little bit too much 4K prominent, which is a shame. But it has super smooth treble. The treble is completely intact. You're going to be able to hear things you never heard on the Kato or the U12T, you know, in this region. You're going to be able to hear more information because it's filled out there. Okay. So, you know, this is a prime example of, uh, you know, the, the people have the wrong philosophies, the wrong way of thinking about audio. They, they look at it from like if they were a stupid kid, like, oh, that costs more. That's better. You know, that's, you know, stuff like that. Um, when it's not about price at all. Uh, and again, my target kind of makes that 4K look like the end of the world on the EM6L. But if we get rid of my target and we just have like diffuse field, um, you know, we, we, it doesn't look as bad. That 4K goes along diffuse field. It still has the 2.8K ear gain dip. But, you know, from 4K to 20K, it, it's diffuse field. It looks more, you know, fine. And it is fine. You know, the, as long as there's an ear gain scoop around 2.83K, you know, it could be a small scoop. It doesn't really matter that above 4K, it levels out back to diffuse field. It doesn't It's not the end of the world. But my target, you know, prefers a slight, you know, more dip around 4K. But it's not the end of the world. Okay. Um, so that's uh, a, a, a prime example of, you know, somebody who's learning about audio, uh, realizing that price is in everything and that a lot of companies are just bullshitting people. Um, so again, you know, we look at the Kato and the EM6L, we can see the Kato fills out that hole in the upper treble. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's a better IEM. Okay. So let's go ahead and go to the um, next video. Get these things out of here. And obviously we're going to be looking at the Mega 5 EST and the Sennheiser HE1. Um, so the Sennheiser HE1, this is what I was talking about when it comes to microphones, where... You know, you have this cheap chi-fi stuff, you know, $500 or something. And then you have this boutique German, you know, thousands upon thousands of dollars with marble amplifier tubes sticking out of some sort of box. You know, these electrostatic headphones or whatever, thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars in some luxury mansion sitting on a table versus, you know, some cheap chi-fi with a bunch of ear ear tips and a, a cable. Um, you know, they're trying. They're trying. So we're going to watch this real quick. box right here is the closest thing I've ever experienced. Really, really, <laughs> my iPod is on top. Yeah, that's the perfection. No, it's this. This is the High Senior Mega 5 EST. Now, nothing is perfect, but this is the closest thing for me. The owner of this IEM sent it What's funny is he says this is the closest thing to perfection. You know, again, I, I want you guys to see this crap. Because look how close this is to my target. My target that a lot of people scoff at, that a lot of people laugh at. They say, oh, you know, you, you blah, 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 blah. Okay, this guy mm. is literally saying the closest to perfection he has ever heard is my target. You can't make this shit up. And again, you got to point this shit out over and over and over again. Okay? It, it, I know what I'm doing. I make these videos because it's important. You have so many nerds who don't, don't understand how, how simple this is to me and how everybody actually agrees with me <laughs> in so many ways, but they don't want to admit it for whatever reason around on a review tour and when it got to me I asked him if I could buy it and he said yes let's talk about build and comfort a little bit then let's get into sound I feel as though there is absolutely nothing I'm missing from the mix and I feel like there are plenty of things I hear in this that I miss on a lot of headphones and I mean a lot of headphones things that I would only hear on certain tracks when I was listening to the HE1 a headphone that I had the privilege of having at home for a little over half a year and the Mega 5 ESC is the only thing that has ever done quite the same thing as HE1. At the next.
closest thing behind that is probably like the bravura or the Aperio for me. This is so this is yet again one of those hustlers. Oh, you pay more, you get a better experience. Um, scams. So we can look at the HE one. Okay, so the HE one does sound similar to the Mega Five EST. Okay, um, the Mega Five EST has much more bass emphasis. And there is a hole in the HE1, a tiny hole, but admittedly, you know, and 1.5K dips down a little bit too much on the HE1. You know, there's way, there's a little bit too much 6K prominentity. So if we really kind of trace, again, you, you always should trace over a measurement um, and you can kind of see, okay, maybe there's one, too much 1.5K dippage, maybe not the end of the world. Okay, once I get to 6K, it's dropping down considerably. Oh boy. Okay, this is not good. Okay, so the Mega 5 EST actually has better bass, better upper mids, and more intact treble. So it kinda, the Mega 5 EST kind of goes to shit around 15K plus, to be honest. So we can see this huge kind of hole... Um, you know, this is pretty deteriorated. I'm not going to lie with you. The, the, the HE1 has some pretty deteriorated treble. It's not just this one dip. It, it's kind of, it's overly prominent at, you know, 6K, which is a big problem, to be honest with you. And then it just kind of cuts down in the highs. So we, you know, it's supposed to be filled out a nice treble bubble like this. At, at least the um, Mega 5 EST actually fills in this gap, you know. And it doesn't have that 6K peak. So the Mega 5 doesn't have the, the 6K peak problem. And it's pretty nice. It, it kind of goes to crap up in the highs right here. It kind of just shoots up, cuts down. That's bad. Okay, so that's when we can bring in um, the Simgadi M6L. Okay, we can get rid of, like, maybe change the color on the M6L. Okay. So we can see the EM6L... Uh, you know, again, it's a little bit prominent for 0.5K, but, you know, I I noticed it when I got the, the EM6Ls originally, but it's, it's, it's not that bad because it is diffuse field level with the rest of the treble, so it's not like a huge peak per se, but it is just prominent there. But, again, I, I always want you to kind of just trace, trace over this stuff, you know. And whichever one smoothly follows the target the best is the best, okay? So the EM6L for 120 bucks versus a Buku extremely expensive Electrostat headphone that pulls out a lot of the treble here versus, you know, a $500, you know, in their eyes, mid-fi IEM, you know, does really well. Um, so, again, him comparing it to an HE1 really, you know, perks up people's ears. So we can see the the main difference between the, the Mega 5 EST and the EM6L is one's a little bit more prominent in the upper mids and treble, which is the EM6L a little bit brighter. Um, but uh, it, it's 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 better. Or b b mainly because again, if you if you trace over it, smoothness mm -hmm. is very important. Okay, so if we we trace over these highs, um, again, just trace over it. You know, we can see that's really smooth. Okay, and once we trace over the this one, we can see I'm sh I'm going up and down a bit more. I'm going up and down a bit more. It's getting a little bit wonky up there. Uh, a little bit more wonky. I mean, it, this cut down peak, cut down peak. It's getting wonky above 10K. Well, it's a bit smoother, you know, throughout this whole thing. And it's got a better treble bubble going on compared to this kind of wavy, wonky thing down here. Okay. Um, again, that 4K, not the end of the world, but it is a tonality difference that I did notice originally. I, honestly, I got used to it. And, it, you know, it's one of those things where it's it's not that big of a deal. Um, would I rather it be a little bit reduced? Yeah. 
but it's not that big of a deal. Um, so anyway, um, I hope this taught you something to some degree. This is a between five and six hundred dollar IEM and we're comparing it to a piece of equipment that is over fifty thousand dollars. That to me is mind blowing. And that's just listening off of an iPod or off five hundred versus fifty thousand dollars. Again, people are wasting their money, people are wasting their time. Uh it's a very childish mentality that, you know, sure, I mean the the main thing you should be paying for when you spend fifty thousand dollars is the experience of you know feeling special i'm a special boy you know i'm i'm using this very well built thing versus something that's cheaper you know and um we we can go ahead and you know i might as well do it um bring in the biodynamic dt 990s you know if we want a um um open back DT-990s with worn ear pads. Okay, so the DT-990s with worn ear pads in purple here, it blends right in, doesn't it? It blends right in with the rest of these things. Okay, and that's what I'm talking about. You know, that DMS guy mm -hmm. saying that it's almost perfect, he hears everything with the Mega EST. The DT-990s measure so goddamn close. Okay? You know, they're a little bit brighter, a little bit shimmerier, you know, above 8K. Add some sparkle, not the end of the world. Okay. And then it rolls off a little bit of sub bass because it's a open back dynamic driver headphone, not a closed back, which can retain the sub bass. But, you know, you see what I'm talking about here, right? You see what I'm talking about ob objectively? Okay. So let's um, change the color again. And um, uh Let's hide the M6L and the Mega 5 EST, and let's bring in the, the Sennheiser HE1 again. Okay, so the Sennheiser HE1 versus the Biodynamic DT-990s. Um, the Biodynamic DT-990s follow my target a little bit better in the mids, mid base. It's a little bit warmer, um, a little bit more oomph, a little bit more power in the mid base has the same amount of sub bass extension. HE1 DT990 have the same sub bass. Um, so, you know, uh, when it comes to the mids, the, the very comparable, except again, there's 1.5K scoopage on the HE1 that's not supposed to be there. And maybe it scoops down a little bit too much at 3K on the DT990s, but at least it's scooping down where it's supposed to be scooping down. Uh, once we get to the upper mids and treble, we can see one kind of cuts down um, and has, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of below the target. Um, all the treble information cuts down while the DT990 is in red, retains that treble quite a bit more into the highs. Maybe a little bit brighter than the target, but, you know, you get a much more open, clear, sparkly, expensive sound with the DT-990's shimmer sparkle compared to a more peaking 6K followed by, you know, a pulled out treble, uh, you know, where there's a hole in it, you know, I mean, I'm mean, again just trace over it, huge hole, peak, hole, peak, you know, versus around, okay, some shimmer, some bite to the highs, you know. Um, you know, this huge 6K energy right here uh, on the HE1, huge 10K cut. I mean, that's, I mean, that's, that's, ugh, you know, that's it. When I trace over that, I'm like, what the hell? Peaks out, cuts down, peaks. I'm, I'm not liking that. I'm not liking this at all, <laughs> you know, compared to um, tracing over the DT990s which follows the target a bit better, you know, in an upwards trajectory. Anyway, I'll see you guys later. Diminishing returns, there you go. Um, so I would like to, to hear your comments in the, the comments section down below, my dudes and dudettes. I'll see you guys later. Um, yeah.